Uh, tell us, the International Day Against the Use of Child Soldiers, how significant is this day and has the day made any impact over the years? How significant is this day? Extremely significant in the sense that we can't continue to, you know, turn our, away our faces while young children, underage kids, are used for things that are for adults. So it's like having children becoming adults all of a sudden, and especially for things that are totally absurd and out, out, of, out of line for very young kids. I mean, all over the world, uh, except for some of the war turn areas in the world where children are conscripted into car carrying arms and becoming young, young soldiers, I do not foresee why uh, any sane society will, you know, begin to have young children in in the formation of their military as as a child soldiers. It is unbelievable. It is totally inhuman, and this day symbolizes um, a very critical day in the life of young children. And uh, I think that more countries should beam the lights and spotlight this day to ensure that, um, you know, it becomes uh, a front burner kind of conversation. Four out of every 10 of more than 300,000 child soldiers worldwide are said to be girls. Is this statistic frightening? Is it even correct? Well, it is frightening, and uh, at the same time, um, I don't know how these data are being collected. But I can tell you that um, um, girls, four, four girls in every 10 is scary. I didn't even realize that, um, I mean, for even the, the, our normal, usual uh, military formations, you, you hardly find women, especially in Nigeria. You, you hardly, if you're looking at when would we find the first female defense minister? It may be a long walk. Uh, but realizing that even your girls, four out of in every 10 uh, of these kids are girls, is alarming. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's even something one cannot imagine. And that doesn't make it right for even the boy child. Both the boys and the girls shouldn't be, they shouldn't be adulting. They are children is in even the labor laws there's no no form of law where in the world where it is acceptable for kids to be soldiers you 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 work with women and children how would you say the rights of children uh, are being enforced especially in countries that have ratified the protocol on the involvement of children in armed conflict with the case of somalia well, you know, the thing about our laws and all these legal frameworks and uh, 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 and the UN and all the conventions, they are often, they all look good when their decisions and laws are made, but it's not left for the countries to, to go back to their, uh, uh, countries that have ratified these laws to now domesticate them. Look for it, take for instance, the BAP Act of 2015. It is just now that we are having even about 24 states in Nigeria domesticating them. And after the domestication, you still have to begin to look at the implementation, how effectively these implementations are being done. I don't think that Africa is really um, uh, lacking in laws and all of these frameworks, but the problem is really having these laws work for our children, work for our women, work for everybody. It is the strength of this law. It is how much impact this law has. It is in the implementation of the law. So it's not enough to just ratify. It's not enough to go to these countries of the world and sign. Maputo was there. It looked so good. And everybody, I mean, countries go there and sign and take photo ops and they come back. They relax. It is time that we begin to look at how are we affecting these laws, how are we making sure that at the implementation is really, really, um, it's enforceable and in, those, in, in these countries that they're really being properly implemented. 
I think this is one one aspect that we um, where we really need to look at across South Africa and the sub-Saharan African region that it is the same thing all over. It's not just um, Sudan. Um, even in Nigeria, you can see children, you know, becoming um, what do you call them? Uh, being used as terrorists, being used as uh, suicide bombers. It's not just the soldiers. So it's not enough to make laws, also to make sure that the laws work laws for the are people. implemented. All right, and before yes. we let you go, I need you to speak uh, briefly on the case of the four teenage boys that are facing uh, the death penalty in Somalia and the request from uh, Save the Children for them to have a rethink on the matter. Do you see this happening? Because the Somalia government is yet to speak on the matter. What do you expect uh, in the days ahead? I, I expect that the UN and the rest of the world really do need to mount serious pressure until Somalia backs down and free those children. These are children, they're young kids. It's like uh, sometimes you hear things like you commit adult crime, you go, you, you, you serve adult sentence. But in this instance, it is not the case. Children are children and should be treated as children. I'm, I mean, they have to be that intermediary of space where you can hold forth for children, young lives who are still forming. They're not fully formed. They may make mistakes. And this, when you even conscript them into, uh, into uh, formation that shouldn't, you shouldn't find children in, it complicates the matter. So I think that these children have been put in a place they shouldn't even have been in the first place. And their actions that come afterwards, they should not be responsible for things they're not even of the age of taking responsibility. They're not adults. They All are right. children. They are indeed children. Thank you very much, uh, Mary Ikoku, founder, Emerge Women and Child Rights Advocate. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.